Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Dow Automotive Systems. Learn how we can help you arrive at cost-effective and innovative solutions to your toughest industry challenges at DowAutomotive.com. Here are today's top headlines. Tokyo Auto Show attendance plummeted. Cadillac will come out with the Converge and Lear emerges from bankruptcy. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Tuesday, November 10th, 2009, and now the news. Attendance at the Tokyo Auto Show this year plummeted a whopping 57% compared to the prior show. According to Wards, the drop-off was attributed to all the non-Japanese automakers that dropped out of the show, and it being four days shorter than it was two years ago. According to the Detroit News, GM has decided to build the Cadillac Converge concept car. The stylish model wowed the press and public at the January show in Detroit. The car is expected to share the same drivetrain as the Chevy Volt. A pricier Cadillac version of the extended range electric car will help GM offset the cost of developing the advanced technology. No production date has been set yet, but it's at least a couple of years away. Part of the news that came out of Chrysler's epic press conference last week is that it's restructured its electric vehicle development program. The company's NV Group has been disbanded and absorbed into normal product development programs. Surprisingly, according to the Detroit News, the number of employees working on EVs has remained the same or gone up. The first full electric Chrysler should be a small commercial van based on the Fiat Doblo and it's expected out sometime in 2011 or 2012. Renault is bringing back the Gordini. Well, actually, they're just gonna put a couple of Gordini labels on the Renault Twingo and Clio. The original Gordinis were produced by an engineer at Renault named Amade Gordini, and in the early 1960s, they were fairly common on the rally circuit. Too bad it's just a label and not a modern day revival of the car. With car sales surging last month by 72%, China has decided to raise gasoline prices, Bloomberg reports. The new price will be about $3.31 a gallon, about 88 cents a liter, quite a bit higher than in the United States, but much lower than in Europe. Gas prices have risen about 27% in China this year, and the country now uses over 8 million barrels a day, almost 10% of the world total. Yesterday, automotive seat and electronic supplier Lear emerged from bankruptcy. According to the Detroit News, the company filed in July and shed nearly $3 billion in debt. The company says it's in a good position moving forward thanks to the restructuring and adding new business outside of North America. According to the website Science Daily, Dutch researchers are working on ways to improve the fuel economy of heavy trucks they've developed a relatively simple boat tail attachment that fits on the back end of semi-trailers. Researchers tested the idea under real-world conditions and found that this small addition boosts fuel economy by nearly 8%. They say the optimum length of the boat tail is about 2 meters. The flat panels fold out of the way for easy access to the trailer. Coming up next, Bob Carter, who runs the Toyota division in the American market, talks about how the company is dealing with all the bad news that it's run into lately. Bob Carter is a group vice president and runs the Toyota division in the U.S. market. I recently got a chance to talk with him and asked him about what the feeling was at Toyota with all the bad news that's hit the company lately. Well, I think it's a situation of the turmoil that the entire industry has gone through, as well as Toyota's current positioning in the, in the market. But in my view, as we've spent years of telling customers to expect the best from us. And whether it's our customers, whether it's our investors, whether it's our suppliers, all of our stakeholders, they deserve the best for us. So uh, media and articles can't be any harder on us than we are on ourselves. Uh, it just pushes us to do a better job. I'm skeptical that Toyota is the only car company that has problems with floor mats that might jam the gas pedal 
And I asked him why Toyota is being singled out on this issue. My understanding is, is that NHTSA is reviewing numerous manufacturers of this issue. We take customer safety very seriously. And once we understood that there is the potential of a floor mat entrapping the accelerator pedal, when either it's the wrong floor mat for the design that was not designed for the car or improperly attached, we notified our consumers immediately. We're working closely with the NHTSA to see if there's any um, engineering developments that we can come up with to, uh, to help lower the potential of that accelerator entrapment. Um, we have advised the customers that if there's any concern, just to simply remove the floor mat itself. But there's, uh, in the situation where it is a proper floor mat for the vehicle and it is anchored correctly in the factory anchors, there's no concern about that accelerator being entangled. And we just want to make sure that we're educating the consumers so they fully understand that. I also wanted to know what it was like having Akio Toyoda in charge at Toyota and what kind of changes he's bringing to the company. He's got gasoline running through his veins. His veins. Loves product, drove the Nürburgring 24 hours, the new LFA. Uh, in the short term, he has done a miraculous job of streamlining the company, both vertically as well as horizontally, to try to make the decision-making processes quicker and faster, providing the regions, North America, for example, with more autonomy in the decisions. What will take a little bit more time for the public to see is his enthusiasm on product. Uh, talking about uh, fun to drive characteristics, and a little more emotional design. Uh, I've had an opportunity to drive some of these future products and I'm certainly excited about it. Uh, it's just gonna wait a little longer. It takes a little time to bring these products to market. Again, that was Bob Carter, Group Vice President and General Manager of the Toyota division. Before we go, I wanna tell you a little bit more about our guest for AutoLine After Hours this week. Coming up on this week's AutoLine After Hours, don't miss our evening with Automotive Hall of Famer, Hal Spurlick, one of the greatest product planners ever. Over his career, Hal has given us everything from the Mustang and Fiesta from his days at Ford to the K cars and minivans at Chrysler. That's this Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Auto Line After Hours with former Chrysler president, Hal Sperling. Get your questions ready for the man whose influence is still seen on the road today. And that is it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.